in, and this is uh, the fellow I was mentioning earlier who has um, spent, I think, 20 years at, at Industrial Light and Magic with Lucas, and uh, is now out here and wants to help us get that started. If a person from the community had an idea for a documentary like New Refugees in Colorado, they're actually blocks away from here. How do they, how do they propose something for a student to take on a project? Email. Um, and what we do is we do postings on our, on our wall. We have jobs boards and we also have uh, on our website. And uh, so we, we post them there and then students can have a look and, and see and we see what happens. So. We, we, we toss it up. We get, we get a lot of requests and we put them up and yeah. a lot gets done. Right. We, also have, um, we also have a program that's, that's involved in documentary production. That's a professional documentary production course where students um, get actual tuition credits for doing um, Promotional films for nonprofits, hmm. or you know, some projects like what you're suggesting, um, where they can actually get through federal grants uh, tuition reimbursements up to a thousand dollars for shooting and editing project. So we're doing a lot of that now. Can they make money here? Can they sell a product on uh, the open market? Um, yes, they can. It depends on what that market is, and so that's why we end up teaching a lot of business courses as well, because a lot of them come here and saying, "I want to be an artist," you know, "I want to, you know, invent things," and try to teach them. Well, you know, you really need to walk with two legs here. You've got to have one leg in the real world and one leg in your imagination. You've got to have one leg in creativity, one in technology, so you've got to have a certain amount of balance and what they call it is monetizing product or monetizing the web and, and so forth. So their original creations, if we sit down and package them with them and help them, you know, do that, yes. Can they turn around and get jobs making things for other people? Absolutely. And they do a lot of that. When you think of what is done now, um, you get a new washing machine, you get a DVD, you know, you get DVDs with your car, you get and training films in everything, right? That are that are sent over the web, delivered through DVD um, and iPod delivery. There's every means of delivery. So, and really, it all ties into traditional storytelling, just in a high-tech framework. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board of Rocky Mountain PBS Channel 6, and I would very much like your calling card. Be happy to do that. Should we go and just go through the equipment room quickly? Hey, Frederick, mm -hmm. when they first come, and again, I was at the tail end, and some of us were, how much do they get eventually on their project to build a budget with for a film? <coughs> um, well, in when the upper level, yeah. when, at the upper level, they get about eight thousand okay. dollars, which is which is it's. What we do is we we set the budgets by market rates. We just check with everybody all around and see, okay, what does this camera rent for? What do these lights rent for? What is all this? And so uh, we'll give them an eight thousand dollar budget, which should be enough to shoot about five days okay. or so um, on a on a short project, and uh, then. Then we let them decide. Uh, I want to spend all my money on lighting and, and do something else, with, you know, for camera or or save money on camera. Right here, I want to shoot with two cameras and I'll shoot fewer days. So they 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 have to make the same decisions they'll have to make as professionals. Eighty or hundred thousand dollars worth of gear that we hope comes back. <laughs> 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 And this is this is the equipment room and uh, our intrepid uh, lab tech staff, which is uh, almost all work studies. Um, so the students make their equipment reservations based on their budgets, and their budgets are based on what class they're in, 
We also encourage them to do testing, so we allow them to have a testing budget that's separate from their production budget. So we'd like them to go out and see what they're going to get before they plan to go out and get it. And uh, shoot it and uh, bring it back and then edit it at uh, our 85 edit stations. But once again, it all depends. They don't get, they don't get any budget unless their script passes muster. And so um, once that happens, then their own focus on storytelling and their number of rewrites and so forth that raises that budget from the 80% cutoff point up to the 100% level determines, they determine their own budget by how much work they want to put in to pre-production. Then, before they take the equipment out, they still have to, they post basically a website. It has all their crew listed. It has all their locations listed. It has their location agreement signed by the owners of the property on it. Um, it has their cast on it. It has everyone linked through email. And um, then the professor has to then approve it, approve the project. Then the equipment is released to them. So if they've done, also their shot lists and storyboards. So it shows that they've really been out on the set and they can upload photographs and things so that we can see what their, what their planned shots are.